Please welcome Tiffany Clanton back to the stage. Hello and welcome back. I hope you found this morning very informative and we still have a few hours yet to go. But before we even hit that, I want to make sure you all know there will be a plated lunch for you. We're not going to starve you out. Um, my apologies for that not being on the agenda. Uh, it, it will be plated and served during our keynote presentation. And right now, from 11.30 to 12, we're actually going to welcome back um, three of our vendors. We're going to talk with Mitel, Arctic Wolf, and Palo Alto. Each of these vendors brings value to our organization and helps ensure that our customers get the best solutions for their needs. And by leveraging the three together, Mitel's communication platforms, Arctic Wolf's advanced security solution, and Palo Alto's, except um, Palo Alto as well, uh, for their comprehensive network production, we're able to provide enhanced visibility into customer traffic flow and data access control. To start things off, we're going to start with David White from Mitel. David. Good morning, everybody. So I'm David White with Mitel. I am a regional vice president for the Western United States plus Latin America. So I have a small territory I cover. So I'm going to talk about uh, Mitel today. So the first thing I want to talk about is who we are uh, currently. We just bought a company. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So currently, we have 75 million customers or seats worldwide. We're in 105 different countries, so we're a global company, communication company. We've been in business for 50 years, and all we do is voice. Um, we are the number two UC provider, as well as the number two on-premise PBX. Now, outside of North America, there's still a lot of on-premise PBX uh, throughout the world. So that's, uh, it's pretty good for us because we do have a global footprint. Um, we just announced uh, a few days ago that we purchased Unify. So those of you that are gray hair like me, you may know Unify from the Rome Siemens. So we kind of got those back into our portfolio. Outside of the, uh, America, it's a, big, it's a big play for us. Um, South America, they're, they're massive down there. Uh, they're also very big in, in Europe. Here in the, in the US, it's going to be good for federal government. So the US Navy all has their systems, lots of very large hospitals. So stay tuned. We're going to be seeing new, new applications coming from them uh, that you'll be able to leverage on your existing system today. So one thing with Mitel we've always had uh, in our, our, our blood, if you will, is flexibility. We understand that customers need choices. Uh, we were the first voice manufacturer to virtualize our software. Uh, we helped VMware get into a real, uh, true multitasking, multi-threading database. Um, so with that, we give our customers the flexibility to purchase the system and put it where they want to. We still make hardware. So if you want proprietary controllers for failover to the edge, or run your entire system off it, we still have that. If you want to put our software onto industry standard servers, because maybe you're an HP house or a Dell house, no problem. We can load our software onto those, uh, those servers as well. Maybe you've already virtualized. You're a VMware shop, a Hyper-V, a Nutanix. No issues with us. We can put our software on those uh, platforms. We also understand that people are going more into a data center or a cloud. So we work very seamlessly into private cloud or public cloud. So we work with AWS. We work with Azure. So our software seamlessly works into those data centers so it fits your needs. Um, we can offer failover to the edge. So even though you want to do, uh, have everything live into a cloud, we can still have failover to the edge. So if that data network goes down, power goes down, any of that sort of stuff, your voice communications can still stay up. We also give you flexibility on how you're going to purchase the system. So you might want to do a capital purchase. You might want to do a lease to own. Or maybe you want to go down the subscription model. We offer all of that. We can also do a mix. So maybe your core is capital purchase, but all your remote locations, remote applications are subscription. So we give all that flexibility. We also make it easy to add on applications. So we have an app store, very similar to what you have with your mobile devices, 
So you can go to the App Store and pick the application you want per user and load it up onto their device, whether it's a mobile phone, a soft phone, or even our hard phones too. Um, we're also very strong in a bunch of key verticals. Uh, these are the strongest that we're in, but keep in mind we work outside of all these verticals too. We have a big presence in legal, big presence in retail, uh, but these, these are some of the ones that are very unique uh, and fit our applications very well. So we have a common thread within all these verticals, but again, each one of them have their own compliancy, their own CRM applications. So we break them down individually. Uh, down at the bottom of the screen is a list of all of the common CRMs that we have, and most of these, it's a single part number. So it's already been done, it's already built, so you don't have to customize it. You just talk to your high point rep, say, hey, we want to integrate into Jack Henry, there's a part number for it, and boom, it's done. So we've made it as simple as possible for uh, you guys. Now, I'm going to uh, end with this screen here. Um, I understand you guys uh, have some systems that are maybe older, maybe have end of life. Uh, Mitel's bought a lot of competitors over the last you know, 15 years, everything from Intertel to Toshiba to Shortel. Um, so what we like to do is make sure that your investment that you have in your communication system will move into the latest platforms. So you don't have to rip and replace everything. We understand that's very expensive. Um, so we give the flexibility to make sure that what you have invested in today will move forward. So um, we can, whether it's a hard phone, going from hard phones to soft phones, we have all of those uh, into the migration programs. So please talk to your high point rep about this. We can uh, review everything, price it all up for you, and show you how it's a value to keep what you've got and move forward. If you haven't already, please stop by the booth there. We've got our contact centers. We show how we can integrate with Teams. Um, we've got all of our phones there. So please stop by and take a look at everything. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mitel. And next up, let me find my notes here for a second. And next up, we will have um, Antonio Marquez and Brent Voles from Arctic Wolf. Hi everyone. Hi, I'm in, um, I'm Antonio. I'm with Arctic Wolf. I am the uh, channel account manager for what we call Mountain West, which is everything Montana, uh, west of the California border. So uh, first, before I get started, I just want to thank High Point Networks. Thank you guys for having us here. We really appreciate your partnership and a key Arctic Wolf partner. Thank you for everything you do for us. So, um, Brett, I'm Brett Vowles, account manager for Montana for Arctic Wolf. We're happy to be here today. So. And Tony's going to start off with a couple slides, and then we're going to talk about how Arctic Wolf does security operations as a service. So before we get started here, I just want to talk about cyber risk. So we talk about cyber risk a lot, and like what does that mean? So our whole goal at Arctic Wolf is to eliminate cyber risk. What cyber risk means specifically is anything that impacts an organization professionally or financially. So we want to keep your reputation intact, and we want to keep your wallets intact as well protect you from ransomware and things that are out there the like. So with that being said, the next slide. We don't think that cybersecurity has a, that's a, it's, a, it's more of an organizational problem. It's not a tool problem, right? If you think about this, there's billions of dollars spent every year on cybersecurity tools. Firewalls, tokens, you name it, right? But yet the breaches don't go down. They keep going up. Attacks keep happening. It gets more and more and more expensive, right? So we tackle the problem as more of an organizational problem. Like, how are you building your mousetrap? How are we protecting, you know, making sure you're getting better use of your tools, so to speak? That's really what Arctic Wolf does. We kind of augment your organization to kind of help partner with you to make your enterprise more secure. So most of our customers need help, right? They need help in a few areas. And I've listed a few of them here today, but either you've had a lot of malicious activity, maybe a serious breach, maybe you have um, audit 
concerns around compliance or, or cyber insurance, but a lot of people just have resource needs where they have very little staff and not enough time to do all the threat hunting that's available out there. So, so we come in to help that. That's what our, our main goal is, to actually build a, a process and platform that can help you sift through all of your, your uh, security logs and look at what's going on in your environment and help you remediate those situations. So we're a big people-first company, so we have a lot of people we put on every account and look at exactly what's going on in the environment. This is what our, our cloud looks like. At the bottom, you'll see where there's security telemetry sources we pull from all vectors, whether it be the endpoint, firewall and network, cloud environments, Active Directory, anything related to security elements, right? We run that through our cloud-based SIM, and from there, our triage teams take over and run to ground all the threats that are out there in your environment. So we have over 600 people that we put on our, within our uh, four North America socks that actually do this work for our customers. And uh, it's a 24-7 model, obviously. And, um, and we're data unlimited. So there's no ceiling on the data we take in for our customers. So we want to see everything. We want to react to everything and help you more secure. This is a little footprint of where we are in the country and in the world. We have four North America stocks, plus one in Europe, and one in Australia, which is new for us. So it gives you an understanding of the scope that we have. We have a lot of customers in the region. We have over 5,000 customers total, and uh, over 600 engineers that actually work actively with our customers. Uh, so the concierge security model is really a big part of what we do. Not only do we do threat hunting, which is the work we do in wartime for our customers to make sure that we're combating all the things that are happening in their environment from a threat uh, perspective, but in peacetime, we're able to help actually help you with our concierge security team members to build a better security posture and improve your environment going forward. So we're not just constantly looking at threats, we're also helping you build a better environment and more safer uh, posture for your, your company. This is a picture of our SOC. This is our Salt Lake City uh, location, one of our five North America SOCs, and uh, gives you a picture of the, our building. And this is an active picture taken on one of the floors of the environment of the actual people that work there. All of the people that work in the Arctic Wolf Security Operations Centers are Arctic Wolf employees, so we don't outsource anything, and we don't follow the sun, meaning that when we see something happen, we're gonna stay on it with that team in that location, and we're gonna make sure it's, uh, it's taken care of for you. So. Antonio? So I just want to add, too, if anyone has business in Salt Lake City or if you have offices down there, or even in Minneapolis, that's our headquarters, we, we love customers. So if you guys want to reach out to High Point, we're happy to schedule you know, a briefing for you guys or a visit to the SOC or a tour, kind of show you we're all about, kind of show you the culture behind Arctic Wolf. I always joke that it's kind of like Wolf of Wall Street meets Fargo with Arctic Wolf, is that we're, we're very aggressive salespeople, but there's a big heart behind it. We truly care about our customers and our partners and stuff. So. Come and see us, and we'd love to have you in hosting and kind of show you what we're all about in territory. So um, this one's really important, because what I love the most working with Arctic Wolf is that we pr provide a lot of value, right? And what that means is this, is that we can layer in on your existing infrastructure today. We really don't care what you guys have. We don't sell firewalls, things like that. We work with those partners. So Fortinet's here, Palo Alto's here. They're all great ecosystem partner of ours, right? So if you have these things in your environment, we just take the data and help you make better sense of them, right, and get you going. Another offering that we didn't touch on today, which is important, is our new incident response capabilities. So now we have the ability to kind of help you plan out how, you know, should the worst happen, how do you plan for a, a breach, right? What happens if it does? We can help you plot those steps out and plot your journey from when the breach happens to the finish, who to talk to, who the right contacts are, who the insurance brokers, all of those things that get you moving faster inside of your network. So. That's really important. Oh, I got a slide. Okay, cool. The biggest takeaway again, though, is in is you know the people and process. We're a people first company. That's the value. If you join with Arctic Wolf, you get a dedicated concierge team to your network. So think of us as an extension of your security team. So there's two people you can call on. Um, they're your concierge, so to speak. It's all you can eat. So if you want to call your concierge five times a day to ask what's going on in your network, what are you seeing, what's this weird traffic, by all means do it. There's no packages, nothing crazy like that. It's all you can eat. They are your partner in security. They are 24 by 7. And just briefly, again, talking about value, what we like to hammer on is a lot of companies, they want these SOC services. They want 24 by 7 eyes on glass. They need these things for environment. 
but yet they're short staffed. Maybe it's one or two guys doing all of the IT. It's impossible to have this functionality without a partner in security like Arctic Wolf. If you were to build your own SOC, we figure it'd cost you roughly, probably anywhere between 80 to $100,000 per employee, not including benefits, then you need to staff six or seven, building, power, cooling, heating, all that stuff. All of a sudden, you're looking at a multi-million dollar project to do basic SOC services at that point in time. Whereas Arctic Wolf can layer in your existing network and do it for a fraction of the price, even for the cost of around one full-time employee. So um, we're just about out of time, but if you have any more questions, we're here at the booth. We've got a ton of giveaways. We've got fanny packs, we've got koozies, we've got stuff. I mean, get it gone. I can't bring it home with me. I don't want to bring it home with me, so please take it, and uh, we'd love to answer any questions you guys have. Thanks again for having us, and thank you, High Point Networks, for everything. Thank you so much. Love hearing from you folks. And lastly, but certainly not least, um, we have Palo Alto. And so I will be introducing, um, I'm sorry, I want to make sure that I have the right name here. We will introduce Leo. Do I have that correct? And he is with Palo Alto, and you have a mic. Wonderful, Leo. Thank you. Good afternoon. Or good morning still, I guess, right, for another 10 minutes anyway. Uh, usually when I get this slot, I dread it because it's right before lunch and everybody's getting hangry. They're looking at their watches like, when are we going to eat? So I'm glad everybody's getting fed right now so you can choose to pay attention to me or not. Um, I am with Palo Alto Networks. I'm the systems engineering manager for SLED North Central, which covers eight states, including the state of Montana. Um, I work with state and local governments as well as education, K through 12, and uh, higher ed. Um, and I have a lot of experience uh, with... Uh, Christmas Sazzy security products going way, way back. Is there a clicker? Oh, here it is. All right. So today I want to take you through just a little bit of journey uh, in Palo Alto Networks and what we can offer uh, from a cybersecurity point of view uh, and how we've grown from just the next generation firewall company to the next generation company for all your cybersecurity needs. So today's modern organizations, right, we, we, we start looking back five years ago. Let's just go back five years, 2018, right, Digital, uh, digitization, right, modernization, moving applications to the cloud, right, trying to figure out do we just uh, do a forklift, uh, do we redevelop everything, uh, and then we exposed our tax surface, right, because we're moving a lot of those to AWS, our cloud service providers. Uh, that increased our tax surface a lot, not as much as what happened in 2020, right? 2020 is when everybody had to go home and work from home. And we had to spin up applications, both in the cloud as well as on-prem, and had to figure out a way to get those users to those applications working from home or wherever they were at. So our, our tax surface even opened up even more, right? So much, much larger uh, when we start looking at the challenge of protecting end users, applications, and our data. When you start looking at the threat landscape, right? What are we currently dealing with out there? It's, it's ex exploded as far as nation state actors, over 100% fold. When you start looking at the average ran ransomware payout, it's over a half million dollars. That's just the payout. When you look at the actual total cost of a ransomware attack, it's around $2.7 million when you take into account all the man hours, all the services that you might have to uh, uh, acquire, uh, as well as the incident response teams itself you may have to bring in. Uh, and then you start looking at uh, uh, what's going on in today's world, right? We have through 2022, what's going on today? Russia invaded Ukraine, right? We have nation state actors there. We have just recently, a couple days ago, uh, a bit lock, right? They, they released, uh, they're, they're threatening to release uh, another value added reseller's customer data. Uh, after a breach. Dish Network, right? That happened this year. 300,000 customers' data was released. Uh, in my state, where I currently live, in the state of Colorado, the Colorado Department of Higher Education, every student's data going back 17 years that attended college in Colorado or applied from a public school had their data leaked, right? So huge, huge loss. And then when you start looking at ransomware, right? Uh, question for the audience. If you end up a victim of ransomware, do you pay it or not? Who would pay it? Who would pay it? No? Everybody would fight it? Right? If, everybody, if they encrypt your data, you're going to fight it? You could, right? Um, in most cases, you're still going to have to figure out how to restore some of that data anyways, even if you do get that token and pay for it. Because even though all that data is, is, is encrypted, doesn't mean it's going to be as easy to decrypt 
after the act that, that data is, is taken. And so things you have to be aware of uh, as a security professional, right? You need to be proactive as you start looking forward instead of reactive. Right now, a lot of us have been reactive since 2020, right? COVID, uh, and then from there we have wars, and then from there we have ransomware, which just keeps on exploding. Uh, but at some point, we need uh, threat intelligence. We got to figure out and get ahead of the game. We need to have the services and products there to actually be able to protect our data and our network, right? And then we have to maximize that, that security efficacy and optimize it uh, hopefully going to a singer, single vendor platform. So what can we as Palo Alto Networks do? Well, we bring that threat intelligence. Has anybody heard of Unit 42? Unit 42, yeah. Unit 42 is our threat intelligence. Uh, they do incident response as well. So when you start looking at MGM and Caesars, right? Another famous breach this year. We're heavily involved in that right now, negotiating the ransomware with the ransomware actors. Um, but we, we offer that from Unit 42, uh, and we keep up to date on the latest uh, attack vectors, threats, uh, as well as ransomware. We're also seeing AI, for instance, being used as an actual threat now, using AI to launch uh, targeted threats against incidents of compromise and things like that. Uh, we do have the best uh, class uh, product portfolio. You probably know of us as a next generation firewall company, and we've been recognized that for over a decade now, but we have additional uh, capacity solutions and services out there uh, that help you uh, expand your, your secure footprint. So when we start looking at Palo Alto Networks and what we can provide, we talked about Unit 42, feeding that threat intel, right? Uh, developing our, our updates, so we're making sure that you know, our, our, our threat uh, protection is updated and it's not compromised. Same thing with sandboxing, uh, file, uh, 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 File uh, sharing of no, sorry file file scanning sorry, uh, and then from there uh, we we take those best practices from our Unit 42, uh, and we layer that into our network security products, which you know us for our, our next generation firewall, uh, but we also have uh, cloud-based uh, firewall services. So we have things like Prisma Access uh, that allows you to use the scales of the cloud uh, to do things like decryption at scale, right? So we can then look into that user data. What are they exfiltrating? What, are, what is the actual download uh, that they're trying to go do? What is that file attachment and email? Cloud security, right? The idea of protecting from development all the way through production in a cloud environment, and not just one cloud environment, but multiple cloud environments, and making sure that we use the same policies across those environments, right? So there's not a different security policy and access for one user uh, versus another. And then looking at endpoint security, right? making sure the endpoint is tied down, making sure that they're writing the right uh, virus and, and firewalling, uh, making sure that they're also not exfiltrating through USB and things like that. And then taking all this data, since we are sensors, right? So when we start looking at our firewalls, we start looking at our clients, right? Those are all sensors that we can put on desktops, laptops, servers, within the cloud and containers, and then feed all that information back into what we call cortex. So when you start thinking of cortex, think of your brain, right? The cerebral cortex, we do a lot of thinking. In this area, we use AI and machine learning to stitch all those logs together to make sure that you're not, you're not getting false positives, you're not getting multiple events for the same alert, uh, and things like that. And so we have the full product portfolio when you start looking at what I'm looking at replacing. So if I have a secure web gateway, we've, we provide that. That is something that we are best in class in now. When you start looking at Gartner Magic Quadrants, we're there in leaders. Uh, in secure services edge, secure access services um, uh, endpoints, right? When you start looking at SD-WAN, we're all there in the actual best of breed. So when you start looking at securing your network, it used to be, hey, I need point A for this, I need point B for this, I need point C product for this to make sure my, my uh, environment is secure. We now don't have to do that. We have a single platform that can provide all that. Don't take my word for it, right? These are our vendor, uh, our, our uh, third-party accolades, Gartner, Forrester, MITRE ATT&CK, right? MITRE ATT&CK, when you start looking at endpoint security, we're the only vendor who scored 100% on the MITRE ATT&CK endpoint evaluation, right? Huge, so we secure everything. We also were just named recently leaders in SASE, so when you look at Secure Access Services Edge and a single vendor solution, so you're looking at SD-WAN, and then you're at, and looking at the web services that complement that from a security point of view, we're the only leader in that. We're the only single, single vendor out there. 
Why are we concentrating on this so much? Because we really believe in the zero trust enterprise, right? Delivering services and solutions around zero trust so we have the least privilege access based on your user credentials. We do continuous trust validation based on where you're coming from, continuous security inspection, right, based on um, policies and procedures you put in place, right, and then we protect all data and secure all applications. And we do that all through a, a architecture, right? So when you start looking at ZTNA, or zero trust network access, it is not a product. We don't sell ZTNA. We sell solutions for that architecture. So when you start looking at ZTNA, well, what are we talking about? Is it for your users, right? If it's for your users, then we're talking about securing your user endpoint and giving you least privilege access based on your user information. If it's for the application, we're talking about from code to production, right? So from development all the way into production within an AWS uh, type of cloud environment. And then from there, infrastructure, which is what we're known for, right? Our next generation firewalls, both physical and virtual or containerized. And so when you start looking at that, we have the complete solution, right? Or almost complete. The only thing we don't plan is IAM, identity access management, and that's pretty much it. Everything else, we can provide you a single platform or solution in a single pane of glass to control users, infrastructure, and applications for zero trust. So, um, when we start looking at what can we offer, it's more than just next, next generation uh, firewalling. And we also provide services on top of that to make sure you get up to speed. Not only do we provide services, but we, Highpoint does too. They are a great partner. They provide services not just for implementation, but as well as optimization. Uh, we've done a lot of great things with Highpoint and continue to uh, look forward to doing more great things with them. And I just want to leave you with one thought. Oops. It's going backwards, here we go. Wrong way. So we eat our own dog food or we drink our own champagne, however you want to look at it, right? So at Palo Alto Networks, the day in the life of our SOC analysts, using all of our solutions. So when you look at my laptop, for instance, I can show you out there. I use Global Protect, I use Cortex XDR. I connect to Prisma Access or I connect to a physical firewall when I want to remote in, right? All that information gets fed back into our Cortex data lake, right, our Pro per terabyte. From there, we can run automated scripts using XOR, right, um, to look at, um, uh, for instance, identify 16 billion events, right? Uh, this is what our SOC does. 467 alerts a day, but only nine of those have to actually be manually intervened. So, great story when you start looking at managing high-end performance networks and automating it, right? And if you wanna know more, we can definitely discuss outside. My time is up, uh, and I appreciate it.